Hi, hello friends. Welcome back to channel. So today we'll be starting one interesting series on central nervous system. Guess what? We'll be dissecting the central nervous system from part by part, from cortex, brainstem, spinal cord, part by part, and we'll be learning the regional anatomy and its associated functions, physiology. Then we'll be learning its regional medicine aspects, like stroke involving that area will uh, cause what not clinical features, seizures involving those areas, what features will, will it manifest. All these interesting things we'll be learning. And at the end, we'll be having some 5-6 MCQ discussions. And if some clinical methods or some uh, history taking points, these will be concise at the end of the session. Yeah, so seeing the brain from its lateralmost surface, these are the depressions, sulci, and the elevations are the gyri. So four lobes, frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital. So we are going to see this temporal lobe in great detail today. This lobe is divided into three gyri, superior, middle, and inferior temporal gyri by the two sulci running there. Now let's see the function of these areas. The anterior part of the superior temporal gyrus is nothing but the auditory cortex. The sounds and musics which you hear, the auditory pathway ends here. What is this structure here? The structure of with balance to head movements, vestibule also ends here. So whatever you hear, you must be able to understand and interpret what you are hearing. This is the mental dictionary present in the posterior part of the superior temporal gyrus. This is located in such an interesting location because it can understand what you are hearing from the temporal lobe and what you are seeing from the occipital lobe as well as what you are feeling sensations from the parietal lobe touch all those sensations area is most important for speech as well as language development so with this as you hear more see more feel more your language and speech starts automatically improving this is more developed in the dominant hemisphere of an individual. As we saw, superior temporal gyrus, anterior portion for auditory cortex, posterior portion for vernix area. They are given broadman's area number 41-42 auditory cortex, 22 for vernix area. And middle and inferior temporal gyrus for visual association to language. Next is, in the lateral surface, if you retract the temporal lobe and see, there is one more lobe within it, which is the insula, which is also part of temporal lobe. If you see the function of insula, it's very interesting. It has sensory as well as motor functions. Sensory means a special sensation, which is the taste. Gustatory cortex is associated in the anterior portion of insula. And whenever you feel pain, there are some emotional responses attached to it. Like some will cry for the pain, some will feel angry after having the pain sensation. And also, we will feel some uh, autonomic responses like tachycardia, palpitations, sweating. These are regulated by the insula. Okay, yeah. Next, with abdomen viscera also, Pain from the abdominal viscera as well as peristaltic activity of the abdominal viscera is controlled to some extent by insula. So only they say irritation of this insula might cause irritable bowel syndrome where the bowel is hyperactive to pain sensations. Let's see the sagittal section meaning dividing the brain into left and right halves and seeing the medial surface of the brain. This is the corpus callosum which will be connecting the left and right cerebral hemispheres. Yeah. Next is medial temporal lobe, which consists of uncus, parahippocampal gyrus, hippocampus, 
from there to fornix mammillary body and delivering to the anterior nucleus of thalamus which is a egg shaped nucleus and above the corpus callosum you can find the cingulate gyrus this is the papay circuit and the limbic system for you with olfactory bulb as well as amygdala don't get scared by this system it's very interesting let's learn one by one first is the olfactory bulb olfaction sense of smell we we know that some smell are always associated with some long term memories like smell of a coffee associated with some la- nice restaurant like we associate all these things these memories develop because of this olfactory bulb then amygdala amygdala if you ask me it is just the animal or the demon residing within each human like the basic inner needs like anger fear feeding sex all are the functions of amygdala next is the hippocampus hippocampus is not the region of old past memories it just acts as a circuit in converting the short term memories into long term memories which is called consolidation this won't be converted for all the memories if it is converted won't everyone get 100% in neat exam so what is the factor deciding this conversion before that we will complete the circuit from hippocampus to fornix fornix to mammillary body there to thalamus and from thalamus to cingulate gyrus from there it sprays to whole cerebral cortex yeah now a interesting question to ask whenever you hear some famous song in television you start singing unknowingly at the same time whenever a famous dialogue in a movie is telecasted you see that and you start uttering those dialogues unknowingly which means you have some predilection to grasping those things so actively okay these things are stored in your memory but just think for any pg preparation or any preparation we do we learn some millions of facts why are all those facts stored in our memory huh? we are putting so much hard work why isn't that stored in your memory what's the answer for it if i ask one lyric from a song you will definitely pick it up and tell it to me instantly but if we think of some rule or some guideline will you be able to tell will you be able to tell some concept behind something instantly no no one can instantly do so that means is there any way you can modify this things is there any way that you can modify these tracks so that your short term memories are converted to long term memories yeah this is where the function of hippocampus and limbic system lies see whenever you see some uh, thriller movie you will be continuously thinking what will happen next in that movie you will have that curiosity within you and when the movie ends you will be like yes it is the best movie you have watched that feel will make you passively memorize what and all you have seen so what am i telling with this how can you improve your memory nothing but it's the curiosity it's the emotions behind these things whenever you learn something like in vernix encephalopathy why is amnesia happening you will be learning like vernix uh, encephalopathy yeah it's a mnemonic gova g for global amnesia o for ophthalmoplegia a for ataxia but have you ever thought why does global amnesia happens so 
Now what you will do? If you have that curiosity, you will go and search. Why is this happening? When you search the pathways of time and deficiency and when you are able to find the reason, you will be emotionally driven. Yeah, I got this concept. You will be happy that you are loaded with some amount of knowledge now. This happiness, this reward, this emotions make this circuit reverberate again and again and again. And if you revise constantly, these circuits reverberate again and again and again, making your short term memory converted into a long term memory. The process called consolidation. This, there lies an importance behind curiosity in learning, be curious and the importance of revisions. Is it, isn't it interesting now? Yeah, this is the importance of Pape circuit operation in human beings. Okay. Thus, the Pape circuit starting from the amygdala to the hippocampus to the fornix mammillary body then to the anterior nucleus of thalamus to the cingulate gyrus if it is emotionally overloaded it will spill to the amygdala again frontal cortex again and the circuit reverberates again and again and again converting it into a long term memory consolidation so try stimulating your pape circuit whenever you study try answering this question a region located deep within the lateral sulcus separating frontal and parietal lobe from temporal lobes yeah it is the insula okay next nucleus of thalamus involved in the circuit responsible for conversion of short term memory into long term memories nothing but the anterior nucleus of thalamus next easy Auditory radiation goes to temporal, parietal, occipital, frontal lobes. It's temporal. Yeah. Let's try guessing the answer for these questions. 13 year old girl complains of episodes of abdominal cramps, feel of jaggery taste in her mouth, sense of episodes of coffee smell felt in nose, facial grimacing, meaning abnormal movements. calls her bro as someone new best treatment for her is antipsychotics only give ppis pantoprazole and ultrasound holdaman antiepileptics temporal lobectomy what is the best treatment next all are possible in stroke involving temporal lobe except effluent aphasia b contralateral superior quadrantinopia contralateral homonymous hemianopia d conceptual apraxia try guessing the answers tomorrow we will be back with the applications of the temporal lobe concepts in the field of medicine hope you liked it just comment out your opinions regarding our video in the comment section thank you